what we saw in the last class was I can use a pass transistor this way this for example will pass strong zeros but weak ones ok what I mean by that is if under the condition that A is equal to VDD that is it is on right if the B is 0 then Y will get pulled all the way down to 0 but if V is VDD uh, B is VDD Y will go only up to VDD minus VT it will not be able to charge all the way up to VDD itself because once Y reaches VDD minus VT the A to Y junction becomes the gate to source junction it essentially cuts off there is no further channel at that point no possibility of conduction of current ok so what we saw instead was a sort of better structure as far as this is concerned and this is a sort of compact representation of this is where we say I will consider this kind of a structure right where I use A and A bar ok in order to turn on or off the gate ok so under the condition that A is high A bar will be low right both the PMOS and the NMOS are going to be on ok which means effectively the equivalent circuit for this looks something like some RN over here another RP over here in parallel with it ok and what that in turn means is that under the condition that A is on that is A is equal to 1 A bar is equal to 0 B will be directly connected to Y it does not matter whether B is low or high that value will come through properly to Y so I do not need to worry about the weak 0 or weak 1 condition one of the two transistors will take care of it ok and since I am only putting these to sort of take care of that weak transfer I could probably choose even the PMOS to be minimum sized I do not really need it to be a larger transistor ok <coughs> So this kind of a structure right is sufficiently useful and common that it is given a name on its own it is called a transmission gate right and a number of structures can be built around this. One of the things that you can do with it for example is you can build very nice and compact multiplexers. So, what have I done here? I have essentially connected S such that it is connected to the NMOS for the A to the PMOS for the B and S bar is connected to the PMOS for the A and NMOS for the B. Okay. Now, this structure essentially says that at any given point in time only one of these transmission gates is going to be on and because S and S bar are used exactly one of them is going to be on. Right. So, I have actually ended up converting this into a sort of static circuit right static in the sense that at least Y is connected to A or B properly at any given point in time ok it will never be left floating and of course what functionality does it have Y will be equal to S dot A plus S bar dot B right which is essentially a multiplexer. when S is equal to 1 A will come through when S is equal to 0 B will come through right. So, this is a 2 cross 1 multiplexer that you can construct very easily using just 2 transmission gates ok. This connection over here by the way is interesting right it is not something that you would commonly do when you are building circuits you almost never consider a situation where you take 2 gates and short their outputs together you might have come across something similar in a lab where you would have heard of things like you know the open collector or the open drain kind of configurations right what do those configurations do essentially what we are saying is remember we had the entire discussion of the pull up load right some kind of a pull up which is used in order to make sure that the output is actually connected to VDD or the supply rail right. So in this case in the case of common drain or common collector kind of uh, not common collector the open drain or open collector kind of circuits you can use the fact that they do not have that pull up already there 
to directly connect two of those together and then put a separate pull up of your own okay and you can essentially create something called a wired or or wired and kind of a network this junction over here is pretty much doing exactly that it's doing a wired or right how is it a wired or because at any point in time only one of these two paths is going to be active right any picture one of them is on that output is going to come through to the output and that input is going to come through to the output okay the interesting thing of course is you can easily sort of cascade this build up even larger multiplexers right by sort of saying okay i will take two cross one multiplexers and use them in order to build even more complex multiplexers right where i have two select inputs i zero s1 right and you can build fairly complex multiplexers without too much difficulty in this way okay but what's interesting over here is let's consider some input over here and an output over here what does the path through this look like the electrical path that a signal is going to take in other words if a is going to have a transition from 0 to 1 right what would it look like what would the transition at y look like assuming that a the path from a to y is now activated because of the choice of values of s0 and s1 right how would it actually be if i look at the equivalent electrical circuit there is one transmission gate through which a goes there is the corresponding capacitances over here what are these capacitances they are the drain capacitances drain or source capacitances of the transistors involved in that transmission gate right which means that i will have some kind of a capacitance then i will have the second multiplexer and the capacitance finally leading to the output okay so you will essentially end up with some kind of a thing which once again looks like it's an elmore chain right at least you can use the elmore delay formula in order to compute this there are no branches over here it's not a tree so you don't really need to concern yourself with further branches and what their effects are but at least this can be used in order to estimate what the delay is so in other words rather than just having a single resistance pulling up or pulling down a load you actually have some kind of a chain through this which needs to be considered but i am assuming over here that the select signals have already reached their stable values and are not changing right any delay that you are computing is always with respect to a transition so i am assuming that s0 is already at 0 s1 is already at 0 uh, so that the path from a to y is selected and then a is undergoing a transition from 0 to 1 otherwise as you pointed out supposing we are considering the path from s0 to y you can do that as well s0 will essentially see the gate capacitance of that transistor in fact of both the transistors it's connected to okay and that in turn what is it driving it's essentially causing a particular transistor to turn on deliver current into the load so that's no longer an elmore kind of a chain that we are talking about it's not a straight forward resistance that's just driving okay there is one further thing that you can do with something like this which is just leave this as well we'll just get back to this later okay so anyway we are out of time right now so i'll stop here for today uh, in the next class there are a couple more different logic styles that we need to look at as we go further very soon within the next few classes we'll be transferring over to sequential logic right we'll start looking at sequential elements what are the latches and how do you build them okay